Although Mars doesn't yet include the sulfur-2 filter, in many cases we can use the H-alpha band to correct a sulfur-2 image. In this image here, we have the sulfur-2 filter in the red channel, the H-alpha in the green, and the oxygen-3 in the blue. In other words, we have a Hubble palette composition. We're going to correct the gradients in the image. To do this, first we need to calibrate the flux. We need to switch to narrowband filters mode. In the red channel, we're going to put the sulfur-2 wavelength, which is 674 nanometers. In the green channel, we put the H-alpha wavelength, and in the blue, the oxygen-3. In this case, the bandwidth for all three filters is 3 nanometers. Now we're going to correct the gradients using MGC. We're going to use version 1.1 of Mars DR1 because it includes the oxygen-3 band. In the red channel, we select the H-alpha band. In the green, H-alpha-2. And in the blue, we select oxygen-3. First, we'll apply MGC with the default settings, but we're going to uncheck the Show Gradient Model box. As you can see, the result is quite bad. This will always be the case if we try to correct the sulfur-2 filter with the Mars H-alpha band in this type of image. It happens because the nebula's H-alpha emission is always much brighter than the sulfur-2 emission. In fact, if we show the gradient model, a large void appears in the red channel because of the nebula's intense H-alpha emission. As a general rule, we need a scale factor much lower than 1, usually around 0.2. If we apply that scale factor, the nebula practically disappears. In this case, we can actually lower it a little more. Now we're going to work on the H-alpha and oxygen-3 channels. We still have some traces of the nebula, so we probably need to increase the scale factor. It's starting to appear inverted, so let's lower it a little. Somewhere between 1.5 and 1.4 looks good. Finally, we do the oxygen-3 filter. We can still see traces of the nebula, so we're going to increase the scale factor again. In this case, we need to go higher. To find the best scale factors, we can calculate a model with a lower gradient scale to allow more of the object's signal to remain. There isn't a very good match between the oxygen-3 in the image and the oxygen-3 data from the Mars database. The nebulas are also starting to appear inverted. Although we have quite a dark structure here, when we go back to a gradient scale of 1024, that structure completely disappears, and all we're left with are the gentle gradients. Let's apply the model to the image. Here's the result. As in the previous video, there was some residual vignetting. It's most noticeable in the top corners, which were slightly red.
As in the previous example, we also have sulfur-2 in the red channel, H-alpha in the green, and oxygen-3 in the blue. The gradients in this image aren't very strong, but we're going to try to correct them. We're going to focus on the sulfur-2 in particular. First, we're going to calibrate the flux. We want to have narrowband filters mode enabled, and we're going to use the same filter settings as in the previous example. Now, we're going to correct the gradients. If we use the default settings, the correction works very badly in the red channel again. It creates a nebula, the result of adding the large H-alpha structures to the Sulfur-2 image. We can see this more clearly if we lower the gradient scale to 256 pixels. The large-scale H-alpha structures have been added to the Sulfur-2 nebula. We need to be extremely careful when working with this type of image. There's a huge discrepancy in the brightness because the H-alpha emission is too bright, so we need to decrease the scale factor. Let's decrease the scale factor until we minimize the increase in the nebula brightness. If we use too low a scale factor, the result is the exact opposite. The large-scale structures are removed. The correct scale factor is around 0.2 again. Let's try slightly lower. 0.17 is good. Now, if we show the gradient model, we can still see some of the nebula structures. It's impossible to eliminate these because there are two different emission bands. However, these traces will be minimized later because we're going to use a much larger structure scale. Now, let's look at the green filter, which will clearly need a higher scale factor. A scale factor of around 2 could work. Lastly, the oxygen-3 channel. Again, we need to increase the scale factor. A scale factor of 1.9 eliminates the nebula. As the gradients are gentle, we're also going to increase the gradient scale to 1024 pixels. When we show the gradient model, the nebula structures practically disappear. All that remains is a slight trace of sulfur-2 in this arc here. This is probably the best correction we're going to get. So, let's apply it to the image. This image had a diagonal gradient because this corner was quite red. After the gradient correction, the sky background has turned slightly red, but remember that it's best to calibrate the color to get a more reliable view of the image. To calibrate the color in this type of image, we need to use background neutralization and color calibration. This means that we can select the nebula itself as the white reference.
First, we're going to neutralize the sky background. We link the RGB channels in the STF and reapply the auto stretch. When we link the RGB channels in a Hubble palette image, the nebulas will always turn completely green because H-alpha is typically much brighter than oxygen-3 or sulfur-2. However, if we use the nebula itself as the white reference, we can balance the three emission bands. In color calibration, we use the area of the sky background as the background reference and the preview with the nebula as the white reference. Finally, we disable structure detection so that it does not detect the stars because what we want to do is add the light from the whole nebula. Now we apply the process and reapply the auto stretch. Now we have the nebula with a color calibrated and without any gradients. And we danced the last walls, your pride, my faults, thought I cancels the sand.